Hello YouTube, this is a uh, JavaScript advanced tutorial video. And in this video we're going to be creating a stopwatch that has basic start, pause, and reset functionality using the set timeout function and some basic math. Um, so I have a document here, I'm going to start creating tags. Just get our HTML document started. Alright, and we'll create a div. Um, actually, we don't need that. We'll create a paragraph tag with the ID output. This is where the actual stopwatch will be displayed. And a div with the ID controls, where the controls will be shown. And some buttons. One with the ID start, pause. This will be the button that starts and pauses the um, timer, stopwatch, and it's going to need an on-click attribute. So it'll start out saying start, and we need a button that will reset our timer. So I'll go ahead and make a style tag just to make that look a little nicer. We'll say output width 100 pixels, height 20 pixels, background color light gray, border. We also need to write a reset right there. Um, so now that we have that, we'll go 120 and 25. But now that we have that, we can start writing the JavaScript code. We will have some variables. The first one will be the time the amount of time that's gone by, that will be in tenths of a second. Our stopwatch will have uh, minutes, seconds, tenths of a second. And we will have an output variable. Actually, we don't need that. Um, we'll have a variable to say whether the stopwatch is running and a variable, or whether it has started and a variable that says whether it is running. So we'll create some functions here. One that will start and pause it. One that will reset it. And one that will increment it. So we can let's see. We actually only need that running variable. So if sorry, time is going to start out at zero. Running is going to start out at zero because it isn't running. Zero will correspond to the stopwatch not running. So if running is equal to zero when start is clicked. Um, we want to start our timer so we can do this by calling our increment function and setting running equal to 1. Otherwise we want to pause it and say running is equal to 0 and after each of these ones, we're going to want to um, 
change the HTML of the start pause button. function we'll set running equal to zero timer equal to zero and change this back to start so now that we have that ready we can um, create our set timeout function um, so if the stopwatch is running Actually, we don't even need that. Um, say set timeout function. The set timeout function has two parameters. The first is the function that's going to be called, and the second is how long to wait to call it. So we're going to wait a tenth of a mill, a tenth of a second, which is 100 milliseconds. And then after that, we are going to um, increment our timer and then update the output and then call the increment function again. So um, we're going to say time plus plus and we're going to create some variables. And they're all going to be equal to something. Minutes is, well, let's start with tenths. Tenths is going to be the number of, basically it's going to be time divided by ten, um, the remainder of time divided by ten. So we're going to say time modulus ten. And then seconds is going to be the floor value of time divided by ten. So, there we go, and minutes is going to be the floor value of seconds divided by 60. We'll just say time divided by 10 divided by 60. So now we have the number of minutes, seconds, and tenths we're going to display. Now we'll display them using document get element by ID and we'll say mins plus colon plus sex plus colon plus tenths. Alright, and then we'll call increment again. So this function is calling itself, making itself repeat, um, but every time it repeats we're actually going to check if running is equal to 1. If running is not equal to 1, then we want to um, stop incrementing it until it's told to start again. And this start pause function will tell it whether to start or not based on what buttons clicked. So when this is clicked, we want to call a start pause. And when this is clicked, we want to call a reset. So let's give that a go. Alright. Um, I'm not really going to wait a minute because that's a waste of time, but. Um, I'll let that run. One thing we can see here is when the numbers are not greater than 10, they're not preceded by a zero, um, which causes the timer to move around, and we don't want to do that. So we're going to prepend 
each of these variables here with zeros if they have a value of less than 10. So tenths is always going to have a value of less than 10. So we'll say 0. But seconds and minutes won't. So we'll say if mins is less than 10, mins should be 0 plus mins. And same thing for seconds. So that's working for us. I can pause the timer. Or zoom it. And I can reset the timer, which doesn't actually work for some reason. Oh, when we reset, we have to um, set the output or update the output. Some reason it's not stopping immediately, but that's okay. The reason we didn't use uh, set interval was because it's not it's accurate enough to do, to do um, this level of time calculation, but at a smaller level, like at thousandths of milliseconds or thousandths of seconds, then it becomes somewhat inaccurate so it's not really a good practice to use it so um, that's why we use set timeout and call it the function itself and that's why there's a little bit of delay when I click pause and reset um, so I can f fix that but um, it might take a while so we're just going to say we don't care enough to change it. <laughs> but um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.